to just stop the recording and open a new one or we continue? I've, I've done that. Ah, sorry, okay. I was transparent. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so welcome everyone. Good morning, afternoon, night, whatever is your time zone. Uh, this is a third day in the morning and today we will basically show everything about imaging and everything that you do after imaging. So self calibration and different types of imaging. And today we will start with Cristiana Spignola, Spingola from ENAF in Italy. And she will explain to you all the basics about imaging on VLBI in this case. So Cristiana, please go ahead. Thanks a lot, Benito. So let me try first to share the screen. Okay. Let me know if you can see it. Yeah, perfect. So, okay, so hello everybody. Uh, I will uh, try to address the basics of imaging uh, of uh, VLBI data within the software CASA. Uh, so this, is, this will be a mixed uh, lecture and tutorial because I will try to do it live using the task to clean. And, uh, okay, let me move to the next. So the goals of this uh, lecture tutorial uh, uh, are to make dirty and clean images from VLBI data set. Just a note, if you do not have your own uh, calibrated measurement set, you can also download the one in the wiki. Um, that's a three gigabytes, so uh, it might take a while. Uh, then we will uh, uh, visualize and analyze the images uh, using uh, the viewer, so the uh, imaging CASA products uh, um, of uh, CASA. And finally, we can also export images into FITS files, and then you can use your favorite plotting routine, uh, for example, for uh, papers or for scientific publications. So I will just uh, briefly uh, mention something that was discussed already uh, yesterday by Marty Vidal. Uh, so we have a Fourier transform relation between what an interferometer measures, so the visibilities, and the intrinsic uh, source brightness distribution. However, as we have sparse arrays, so we have antennas, an, a finite number of antennas located in specific points, the UV plane is not continuously filled. This means that we cannot do a direct Fourier transform of uh, all the uh, visibilities uh, to create our image. So if we want to recover the source brightness distribution, we have to, uh, to, be, uh, to, to, to do another uh, trick, let's say. So as we have this uh, um, issue with the UV coverage, uh, what we can define is a, a sampling function. The sampling function is what yesterday Ivan called the coverage function, and this um, is equal to one where there is a measurement and, and zero otherwise. So what we have actually, what uh, uh, we see here, is that we have the covering function multiplied by our visibilities. And in the Fourier domain, this, is, this corresponds to a convolution between the source brightness distribution B with the PSF, which is the dirty beam, so the, which is uh, uh, this term here. So in principle, we know the dirty beam because we know our array, but uh, if you uh, follow Divan's talk yesterday, we actually have what he called gain corruption. So we have an extra uh, complication in here. Um, but uh, let's assume that we actually know the dirty beam. What we want to uh, do in order to recover our intrinsic source bright, uh, brightness distribution is to deconvolve uh, from the uh, PSF, so the dirty beam. Uh, this uh, happens uh, in an iterative way which is called the cleaning process. Uh, and uh, uh, so here uh, on the right, you can see an example of this uh, uh, process going on. There are several steps. And uh, I think they will become more clear when I will try to do it uh, uh, live. But uh, just for those who are really new to cleaning, I'll summarize the very basics of uh, uh, a simple cleaning algorithm, which is the Ockbom or Clark algorithm. So first, we have to uh, initialize a residual map, which is our dirty image, so our intrinsic source brightness distribution convolved with the uh, dirty beam. And then we can start the cleaning loop. This loop um, identifies the peak in this residual map. It parameterizes it as a 
um, uh, for example, a delta function, but uh, it can be also another kind of uh, function. It can be a Gaussian, depending on the kind of algorithm that you are using. Let's uh, start simple. So we convolve this point uh, uh, source, this delta function with the beam, subtract a fraction of this, uh, which is called the loop gain. Generally, is 10%, but we can change it in uh, clean as we uh, used to do it in Imager. And uh, we uh, subtract this from the residual map. Then if uh, some stopping criteria are reached, uh, we stop it here. Otherwise, we initialize again the cleaning loop. So in the, at the very end, we convolve our model, which is made with these uh, clean components, with these point sources, with these dental functions, with uh, the, um, uh, an estimate of the clean beam, which is usually a Gaussian fit to the main lobe of the dirty beam. We add back the residual map and we create, uh, a, a, we obtain a clean beam image. So this process happens into two nested loops, which are major cycles with the inner loops of, of minor cycles. And this is, uh, this happens because it's uh, faster, so it's uh, something that makes uh, uh, cleaning and deconvolution more efficient because the minor cycles actually uh, happen only in the image domain, while the major cycles have to, um, go, uh, to uh, go between the image domain and the Fourier space to so the visibility plane, and therefore it's uh, computationally expensive. So if you want to know more about uh, the deconvolution algorithm and uh, um, these are the links, uh, and uh, um, for the moment, uh, I will uh, use uh, a not bomb uh, cleaning uh, method. So on the right, you can see actually what happens with the major cycles. This is from the data tutorials, also the, the um, uh, formula I used before. You can see that at each major cycle, we have uh, we can uh, um, make our model, which is an increase in flux density, but uh, each time uh, the residuals go at lower and lower surface brightness. Uh, and therefore, in this way, we can uh, uh, recover the entire surface brightness of our source, even that at uh, um, um, at very low level. So what we want to do is to come from something like uh, the image on the left. So a non-deconvolved image where we have the um, uh, source uh, brightness uh, uh, convolved with the dirty beam to what is called a deconvolved image where actually we have our model, which in the case of uh, a CASA, it's a, a 2D image. Uh, so our model is convolved with the uh, clean beam and uh, plus we add again back uh, the residuals. So this kind of cleaning works uh, uh, better with um, compact sources. So uh, this is an exam uh, uh, measurement set of a gravitational lens, um, which is an actual gravitational lens. It's not the pirate <laughs> that uh, Ivan yesterday mentioned. Uh, so it's a mix between uh, uh, compact and extended emission. And I chose this measurement set to show you how uh, a delta parameterization actually works. So the um, uh, task that we will use is Ticklin. And it corresponds to imager uh, within apes. And uh, there are several uh, uh, parameters to be set. We have uh, uh, the uh, visibilities uh, um, uh, part here in the top. Um, so the yellow part where we have to select uh, our data. So we have to select the field if you are using a multi-source measurement set. So if you have, for example, the calibrators and the target, uh, you can also uh, select uh, the uh, spectral windows uh, with SPWs, the time range, UV range, antennas to be included, excluded. Here you can select the data as you prefer. Um, then we have to uh, in, uh, decide what data column to be used. I think something uh, about this was already mentioned in uh, Mattermost uh, that if you have, uh, if you are using uh, the measurement set when, when you run apply cal, so the multi source measurement set, uh, then you have to choose the correct data column because that's uh, the one that includes calibration. But if you have split uh, the target only, then what is left in the new measurement set with the target only is the only the data column, which is the previously corrected data column. So in case you have the split measurement set, here you set uh, data. This is what I will do later, actually. Um, 
So we have the uh, image parameters, uh, image, of course, the uh, image name, image parameters. So in size, cell size, and face center, you can here put the face center in uh, J2000 uh, coordinates, for example. Here on the slides, uh, just uh, a, re a recap on how to set the pixel scale. So the cell size uh, um, and the field of view. So the image size, which uh, um, depend both of the parameters on your data specifically. Uh, so um, in the case of the cell size, uh, you can uh, take a look at the plot MS at the maximum uh, UV wavelength. And uh, so set the set, usually the cell size is set according to the highest angular resolution that you can achieve. Of course, you have a range of scales that your data um, uh, samples, so your uh, interferometer samples. Uh, so that's uh, also a critical parameter here. Um, another thing that you have to, um, uh, to select is the Nyquist sampling factor. So here, you, this makes sure that your PSF is sampled by at least three elements, so three pixels, or maximum, let's say, five pixels. But if you um, sample more your uh, main lobe of the beam, so your clean beam, then you can encounter other um, difficulties uh, in the imaging, which is called oversampling. So you may have in your image some artifacts that uh, you didn't want to have, so that's not real. So just uh, keep in mind that this is uh, actually tricky, even if it seems uh, simple to set. Uh, then we have the field of view which is the image size. We will have later a wide field uh, uh, imaging lecture. So you can, uh, you will learn a lot about this uh, also later. But uh, this uh, uh, parameter here uh, depends on your uh, bandwidth and time smearing uh, limits, also your primary beam limits, and of course, the expected size of your source. Um, so uh, we, I will uh, just uh, uh, go on with a multi-frequency synthesis kind of analysis, so MFS. Um, as uh, Ivan said yesterday, this is the way to take into account the spectral dependency of our source, also because we have now very large bandwidth, so that's uh, critical. We, um, so as I will uh, talk about uh, a standard radio continuum uh, imaging, I will not go through uh, what is uh, related to the uh, spectral line imaging, but here you have, uh, for example, refrain uh, that uh, you can set in case you have spectral line imaging and you are creating a cube that you can do it with spec mode. Um, so the gridder, I will use standard gridder, but again, Again, uh, I think that some more complicated grid options will be um, will be discussed later. Uh, I will not uh, uh, apply any primary beam correction. Uh, and the deconvolver here, you can select uh, the um, algorithm that uh, cleaning uh, will use. So I will use an Ogbom one. But here you can have many. And one particularly, especially important in the case you have extended and compact sources is the multiscale cleaning, which is implemented here. Uh, you can also restore, uh, decide the size of your clean beam with restoration. And uh, um, then now I will discuss just uh, uh, before the waiting, the number of iterations. So this is a bit uh, tricky to set. Uh, of course, if you put it equal to zero, you will produce a dirty image because you are not deconvolving um, um, from the PSF. If you select it larger than zero, all a all set of parameters will be unlocked, especially those that are related to the minor cycles uh, and so the threshold and so on. So here, um, I usually, as a rule of thumb, do not use a number that is larger than the number of visibilities in my data set. But uh, basically, you don't want to be limited by the number of iterations of the cleaning. You want to stop according to a certain criteria, uh, criterion, for example, the threshold, uh, which can be based on the RMS of your uh, data set, or if we do it, uh, you do it interactively, as I will try to do, uh, uh, you can stop when you see that uh, um, uh, within your mask, the um, uh, source, uh, you have cleaned all the flux density of your source, and basically what is left is only noise. So you want to, um, to use different kind of stopping criteria. That's why number of iteration here should be a large number. Um, so you can select uh, uh, the weighting scheme, 
Uh, and uh, um, so here you can use natural, uniform, and bricks weighting. So uh, the bricks weighting uh, is a little bit different from what is implemented in uh, uh, imagery in apes. Um, so let me uh, know. I don't know if uh, anybody has uh, um, has something. Uh, more updated about the robust, but uh, as far as I know, in uh, CASA, robust uh, is a um, Briggs parameter is between minus two and plus two, where uh, 0 0.5 uh, uh, in uh, CASA corresponds to robust zero within A. Uh, so the minus two is the uh, totally uniform, the plus two is uh, uh, totally natural weighting scheme. And then uh, um, uh, finally, uh, we, um, we have the last two parameters, restart, which uh, if uh, it's equal uh, to true, then uh, the cleaning uh, um, process will start from your last image. So uh, you should uh, keep in mind that uh, you uh, should change the names of the images. So in image name here, um, right uh, below data column, uh, otherwise uh, uh, you will start back from uh, the pre cleaning from the previous the previous image. Um, so uh, this is up to you, depending on what you want to do. I usually keep track of cleaning, changing the names and having different cleaned images. And the last but not least, uh, safe model is crucial when you do self-calibration. So I, I believe that uh, Javier uh, will uh, tell about this later. Uh, so if you, if you do not select anything, so safe model equals to known, uh, your model will not be attached to your measurement set. But if you select safe models equal to model column, then it will create a new column uh, within your measurement set, which is called model column. And so that will be then used uh, to do self calibration. So um, here now I will try, so I will stop share for a second and I will try to, uh, to do um, an interactive cleaning. Let me uh, see if, uh, okay, so I have to uh, share this. And then can you let me know if you see the, Terminal. Yeah, yeah we see yeah. terminal and okay. top on your screen. Okay. So uh, what I have uh, uh, done already before, it's like, uh, you know, when you do these demonstrations of cooking is to uh, run clean with number of iteration equals to zero uh, so that we create a dirty image and with viewer, which uh, I think Benito uh, showed uh, the use of viewer also to uh, inspect measurement sets, you can actually open the images. And here we have uh, um, dirty image, um, dirty dot image, sorry. And then we have a number of surfaces uh, attached to our dirty uh, um, uh, name <laughs> and uh, uh, we will inspect all of them. So we can load them by using raster image. So dirty dot model raster and then primary beam. Uh, then we add PSF dot PSF, which is uh, uh, self explicative, the residual, and uh, the sum WT is a um, single pixel. Uh, you can see it here from shape. It's a single pixel image that contains the sum of all the weights of the visibilities. Uh, so we will not um, uh, use it open here. So here we have our viewer, which is our graphic interface. Uh, um, for cleaning um, and therefore also for the uh, later self calibration steps. Um, we have a lot of buttons, so I will show you how I, what I usually uh, use to inspect the images. Uh, and uh, so first uh, the zoom uh, buttons here with the lens on the right, but also this one here, uh, the second row, the first one where we can draw a rectangle, double click and zoom on our system. Uh, here we have this uh, uh, lensing system that is and a jetted AGN that is quadruply imaged. And uh, so here we can zoom, for example, in the brightest emission, you can see that it's a little bit extended. And here we have our uh, beam in the bottom left corner, we can zoom out. We can move uh, with the hand here uh, across the image. And uh, um, then we can, for example, as you may have noticed, uh, our source is not exactly at the face center. So we can either uh, click on view cursors and it will show the cursors uh, in all images. So as this is a little bit uh, uh, too much, 
we can also use this point marker here. And if you pass with the cursor over the buttons, it will show what uh, the buttons actually do in case you forget or you don't remember or you don't know. And then you can put uh, a, um, for example, point marker here, you will get uh, information about this region, which is actually a single uh, point, but we have the center x, y, so in our uh, JW coordinates, uh, but we have also the statistics about this region. So to remove a region, you pass with the cursor over and then type S in your keyboard and it will be, it will, uh, be removed. So let me zoom in and, for example, draw a rectangular region in uh, image uh, D, that is the uh, less bright uh, image. Here we can get the statistics about what is within this region. So it's basically what TV stat in Imager uh, does or Insat in case you are doing it to, to on the entire image. So we have a lot of information here. Uh, the observing frequency, the brightness unit is in Jansky per beam, the beam area in terms of number of pixels, the number of pixels within this uh, uh, rectangular region, the sum of uh, uh, the values of the pixels here, the, thought, the integrated flux density in Jansky, the mean flux density, the RMS and start at TV, uh, minimum and maximum values of the pixels, so this is in Jansky per beam, and how many regions we are actually uh, selecting, which is uh, one. So now with uh, animators, uh, in case you do not have uh, these animators by default, uh, you can go in the top panel uh, with view and then display animators. Let me remove it and the tick on the left should be on. Uh, we can move to the several images that have been produced uh, during the cleaning. But we didn't do any cleaning. We did just run, uh, I just ran the T-clean with a number of iterations equal to zero. So the model, uh, does not exist, of course. Uh, we do not have, we did not have apply uh, the um, uh, primary beam correction. So the dot pb image is empty as well. The PSF, sorry, let me zoom out, is our dirty beam here. And uh, uh, so you can uh, check this uh, um, in different ways. And then we have the residuals. And the residuals, in this case, of course, are equal to our dirty image. So I think this was the last, uh, yes, the last image. So I will close the viewer and uh, um, I will uh, um, just run a T, I will do T get T clean to restore the parameters that I have previously um, inserted in T clean. So here, okay, I didn't uh, save anything. My, yes. Um, so I will just uh, re uh, into the input. So I will set the visibilities, uh, the image name. I will call it clean to uh, two dot not. So the other surfaces will be attached automatically during the cleaning process. So I will just give the first part of the name, then a name size and the cell size, the number of iteration. I will set it to. Um, 100,000 iterations. And here you can see that we have uh, now several informations, um, several new parameters that are related to uh, the uh, minor cycles uh, uh, stopping criteria, for example. So here we have the gain loop. I will leave it to 10%. This threshold here, I will not set it, but here you can set uh, either manually a threshold or a threshold that is based on number of sigmas. Uh, the maximum number of minor iterations, I will leave it uh, to minus one because it's uh, something that we can also um, uh, select uh, manually while doing cleaning. I will show it in a moment. Uh, and then here, there are all these values that are uh, now set to the default values. And basically what, it do, what they do is to um, uh, allow CASA to select a way to stop uh, the minor cycle. So these are based on the peak of uh, the, um, the residual image and the fraction of uh, the PS that is used to convolve, uh, to convolve it with, um, with the PSF. And basically, if you do, we do not set anything, uh, the software will automatically um, estimate a threshold where to stop the number of uh, the, the minor cycles and start a major cycle. So I find it, uh, um, I never change those values uh, by hand. You can play around, but I think that the way uh, the uh, 
Clean uses them is already fine. But we can then change the number of uh, minor cycles within the major cycles by hand. I will show you in a moment. Uh, so let me just check uh, that uh, I uh, selected also interactive equals to true. Um, so otherwise, it will do a cleaning without opening the viewer. And so we will not be able to stop it unless we do a control C, I think. And actually, if you in that case, if you have uh, um, selected the save model equals to uh, model column, then you will very likely corrupt your measurement set. So I do not uh, recommend doing that. And uh, then let's see, uh, we just type go T clean and it will uh, um, give us uh, uh, the, um, uh, in the logger, the recap of what we have inserted. So all the parameters, an error message that we do not need to worry about. Number of rows selected is the actual number of visibilities. And of course, the first uh, uh, here, oh, sorry, here on the left, you can see the progress in percentage. I actually find this very, very useful. You can uh, go grab a, a cup of coffee in the meantime, because the, of course the uh, most uh, consuming uh, uh, step is to create uh to make the PSF, to make the dirty image. And you can see here that it's now doing it in the logger. So you can see that it's doing this step here. And what it's, uh, uh, we have set, uh, sorry, the weights to natural weights. Of course, you may want to change it to different kind of weights if you are more interested in the highest angular resolution image that you can obtain. You want to select the uniform weighting scheme, or you can play around with UV taper, which uh, um, is a very handy the way it's implemented here in terms of meters and arc seconds. Okay, so the uh, dirty beam has been uh, created. Here you can see the properties uh, and uh, also the theoretical sensitivity has been uh, estimated uh, by CASA. Um, and uh, um, it starts uh, the first major cycle. So in a moment when this will, uh, will be finished, uh, a new viewer uh, will open again. So we use viewer for both doing the cleaning and inspecting the images. So it's a very powerful tool. Um, and in the new viewer, we will have a, in the, the, yeah, the new viewer window, we will have a, a new box, a green box in the top right uh, uh, corner. And in that part, Part, we will be able to set uh, the parameters for the minor cycles uh, and to stop and continue cleaning. Um, so let's see if uh, it will open. Yes, this seems a good uh, sign. Okay, so this is the first uh, residual map that I will talk about before using the slides, which is uh, the initialized residual map. Here is the uh, dirty image. So that's uh, what we just uh, saw before. This is the green box here. So here you can see that we have, uh, this is the maximum of iteration of total iterations left, um, 100,000. The maximum uh, number of uh, uh, iterations within the minor cycle is uh, uh, set automatically to 100. The threshold here is zero because we didn't set it, but actually um, uh, Ticklin uh, sets for the first round a automatic, uh, automatic cycle threshold. I find this, uh, uh, that is always okay. Uh, we have uh, um, in this part, I don't know if you can read it because it's very small. We have uh, here the first box, add and erase, which is related to uh, the uh, clean boxes. So the mask that we will create. And we can uh, uh, add these boxes either to uh, a single channel in case of a cube, or uh, we can create different boxes for multiple channels. This is very useful when doing uh, initial lines and cleaning of spectral line. And this is set by here as the same with the polarization. So what I will do now is to zoom where uh, I believe to uh, the emissions uh, to be true. And uh, um, so, uh, sorry, just a, a clarification. I will do, uh, let's say, old-fashioned cleaning but interactively by setting boxes. 
so a mask, and this will help the algorithm to converge faster. Uh, but of course, you can also decide to not use the boxes and do it non-interactively by setting a threshold. Um, it, of course, the threshold is very important. Otherwise, uh, you will uh, likely overclean or underclean your image. But uh, this is just to show you how to do it interactively. Uh, otherwise, the non-interactive uh, part uh, will not be uh, very much of fun. So here I select uh, a box uh, in, uh, let's say, in an ape special way, I select an oval box here. Of course, it's green over green. Double click, uh, and you can see here that the white, uh, white contour has been created. And this uh, sets uh, uh, the first uh, box, uh, the first part of our of the mask. So I can uh, uh, use also rectangles, but I think that there is one um, very nice feature of cleaning in CASA, that is this polygon rectangle here. So the regions are those uh, buttons with the R within, and the polygon drawing is really uh, useful when you have very weird shapes for your sources, for example, gravitational arcs. You don't want to have uh, thousands of boxes across your source, but in this case, you can create a single uh, region that has the shape that you want to, um, to select. So let's go through the four images. Uh, so I will start to create the polygon region. I'm doing it roughly just because we are we do not have uh, too much time. So with double click, you close the polygon and with double click again, you create the mask. And you can see it here that in white, maybe um, uh, it's uh, done. So we can anyways doing it also with uh, um, ellipses and then so this part here everybody does it in a different way i guess that if we um uh, if uh, we all uh, clean the data sets, we would also set, all set the boxes in a different way. So I'll just uh, uh, show you how I would do it. And uh, so I will first uh, add the boxes where I believe the mission to be true. In this image, which is uh, this component of our lensing system, which is image C, you can actually maybe notice that we have this uh, tiny tail. I'm not sure if this is a true emission, so I will not include it in my mask. Uh, this is at low surface brightness, so if uh, real, it will, uh, con it will appear in the residuals at later stages. But something that is uh, um, very important, uh, especially in the self-calibration process, is to, not, uh, to make a good model of our source. So it's very difficult then to get rid of, of a uh, false component uh, if you add uh, something that is not real from the beginning. So here, what now if we are happy with the mask then we continue with cleaning so we actually set sorry um as the mission is quite bright, uh, we can set the maximum number of cycle, uh, um, of minor cycle iterations to a larger value. So I usually stay here between uh, um, 200 and 10. So this is the range that I typically use. Mm, I'm open to suggestions here, uh, and I guess that uh, everybody has different uh, opinions on this. But I wouldn't go further because otherwise you do not have any control anymore on the cleaning, even though I believe that uh, CASA will kick you out for minor cycles iterations when it finds that your peak residual is equal to the peak of the side lobes, because of course it knows where the side lobes, uh, the amplitude of the side lobes. But anyways, I, I wouldn't go further than this. So what we did is to press the green button here on the top uh, um, right, uh, and this will uh, continue the deconvolution. We with the mask that we have uh, um, just put on the, on the image, and it will open a viewer again. But if you act actually click on the blue arrow, then it will go on with a non-interactive cleaning, and then you will not see the viewer again, and uh, that's not um, good. So we go back to the logger, and you see that we have run the major cycle number one. We started with a total model flux density that is zero, but now our model uh, from zero went to 28 uh, millijansky. 
uh, Miljanskis. Here you can see the peak of the residuals, which uh, uh, started from 16 and now is going to 4 Miljanski per beam. And uh, um, so uh, one thing that you may encounter is that uh, the cleaning does not always converge. Sometimes it doesn't. And one of the way to check when things uh, go wrong is to check if the peak of the residuals is going higher than the previous step. It shouldn't be. Same story with the model, the flux density should be always increasing and never decreasing. So now he um, has finished um, and you uh, actually you can see here that the, uh, it did 39 iterations. So uh, it computes uh, the um, the way automatically, the way to kick you uh, out. But uh, in case it, it could go further, we could, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, in, if the peak of the residuals wasn't at the same level of some side loops, we could go further with our, um, with our minor cycles. So we are now uh, at the next step where we have removed a fraction of our components, of our models, and we have have stored it in the dot model image. So what uh, uh, H used to do is to create a clean component list. Here we have actually an image of our model. That's, um, that is very nice to inspect. So we are going at lower surface brightness. So we can include the new um, uh, emission at lower surface brightness in our uh, boxes. And uh, let me try uh, something here. So now I'll go to uh, image A, but uh, I, by mistake, I add the region like this, or uh, including uh, way too much emission. Of course, this is not what we want to do. So we can erase the regions by clicking here on erase. And uh, uh, so we, um, we can erase our region and then with polygon, polygon R here and uh, with add again, otherwise uh, it, we will double click, but nothing will happen because it erases the regions. We uh, add back again the mask here. Um, so this is uh, um, yeah the interactive cleaning. So we can, uh, um, we can every single uh, at the end of every major cycle we can check uh, what is the stage how is the um, uh, emission within the mask that we have uh, uh, selected you can see that here we have now a little bit of extended emission maybe i can zoom in uh, um, so here and of course, you can be much more precise than what I am doing at the moment. This is just uh, like a demonstration for, um, uh, for how to do the interactive cleaning with Kata. And uh, of course, uh, I, let me uh, click on continue so in the meantime it goes on. Uh, of course, you, you clearly see here that we didn't reach the noise level within our mask. So there is still emission to be cleaned and, uh, um, and so we need to go uh, to continue cleaning. Uh, you you can also change the stretch of your map. Uh, I think that the uh, stretch that uh, auto is automatically set by CASA uh, as also uh, in imagery in apes uh, is uh, already fine and does not bias towards uh, very low surface brightness emission that might not be true, but you can ch change the stretch by using this uh, um, button here for the settings and I will show you in a bit. Uh, so it's, um, it has finished to run the major cycle number two. So again, these uh, cycles take a while because they, uh, uh, the, uh, they jump from the Fourier space and the image domain and our model flux density here, you can check that has increased. Um, you see here that the cycle number of iteration was 200. This time we did it 188 iterations. The the peak residuals uh, uh, goes lower, which is good. And, uh, um, and then we can wait for the green uh, area to appear. If we want to know at what stage we are, we can check the terminal and it will tell, tell us in percentage uh, uh, where we um, are. I think not that far. And uh, let's see. 
Okay, uh, so here the viewer displays again. Ah, one other thing I wanted to, you will likely notice when you will do it, when you will do it, is that if you run cleaning in a window, in a desktop window, and then uh, you uh, are doing something else because it will take ages uh, to run because it's super large data set, when the new viewer window is ready, it will actually uh, show up uh, uh, and uh, tell you uh, to go on. So you will know uh, you um, automatically that it has finished. So now you can see here, and that is why I like this system, because there are several subcomponents in the lens the images that are at lower surface brightness. And here we go with one in image B. So this is the second brightest uh, lens image. So uh, in this case, by doing uh, it interactively, of course, we, have, uh, uh, we can add uh, this new emission in our mask. But what if we run uh, the blue arrow here without including this component? we would have uh, uh, lost a little bit of information and our cleaning would not have gone um, uh, very well. So we include uh, this component in here in our mask and now we have uh, um, this new mask uh, for this component. Maybe there is this one here as well. I know that this is not uh, uh, perfect. Sorry, I'm not very fast. Uh, uh, at uh, seeing all the emission. Uh, usually it takes much more time to do it properly. So take your time to do the cleaning. Uh, and it can be one of uh, the most uh, uh, time, it is one of the most time consuming parts, but I think it's also a lot of fun. Um, so here, for example, let's say that we believe this emission, we add all this emission. Uh, so you can see that we have extended emission in these uh, images as well. And uh, um, so in this case, for example, let's go for a, a polygon region. And uh, um, so we can enlarge uh, the uh, region. And with ESC of your keyboard, you can uh, ask, uh, exit from the uh, polygon region. So I wanted to show you that you can change the stretch here with this uh, display settings. You will see that we have a clean nut dot residual because of course here we are doing the cleaning. So each time we are actually looking at a residual image where the model has been subtracted from our data. And so we are going to clean the residual image. And we also have our mask that is uh, uh, composed by the white part, the white contours here, the clean boxes. Here we scale in power cycles. For example, we can change the stretch to different uh, uh, values. Maybe you don't like these colors or you're colorblind or you really prefer to work in another color scale. You can change the color scale. So you can use, for example, grayscale. Maybe you visualize this better. The default is rainbow too. And uh, the, then I will discuss uh, also uh, later other options here. But uh, uh, if uh, we'll have time, I see that uh, I don't have so much time left. So I will just uh, uh, click again uh, the arrow. We can check here that uh, um, we start the major cycle again. We have 72 milijansky. And, uh, um, and so now this time, it completed uh, 388 iterations. So we, uh, it, it's uh, somehow um, estimating uh, the numbers of uh, cycles that uh, he has to do uh, in, uh, um, in an automatic way by using those parameters with the max, the peak fraction of the PSF and the peak of the residual images so that uh, we do not have to worry about this. But of course, this, can, this is something advanced that you can also change it uh, at a later stage. So once this one is finished, I will just show you the cleaned image and how to inspect the cleaned image. So I will interrupt this cleaning, uh, even if we didn't reach the uh, uh, level of uh, um, uh, when we have cleaned the entire flux density within the regions and just because we do not have time. But uh, of course, you can see from this image is clear that we have a lot of, clean, uh, of flux density that we have still to clean, or at least uh, we are at lower surface brightness. So maybe it's not that much, but it's clearly there. Um, so it starts uh, the, the new uh, cycle, maybe. Uh, we will see the new residual image in a moment. Yes, and you can see here that uh, uh, as far as we go, 
uh, we go at lower surface brightness. We have, uh, again, here we have, uh, uh, again, image with the arrows of your uh, keyboard. You can move around. Uh, maybe there is a little bit of emission as well there, here in the inner part. But uh, I will just stop cleaning. And with this action here, uh, what it will do is to uh, convolve the uh, clean components, which actually is our model, with the, um, with the clean beam, so this estimate of the uh, main lobe of the dirty beam, and add back the residual image. So let, with, uh, here you can see this is the uh, measurement, uh, the estimate of our clean beam with its position angle. This is the total model flux density that is in uh, our image. Let me open the image that uh, um, uh, I have uh, uh, created while going uh, um, down to the noise. This time we will have a dot model image that is uh, actually um, um, uh, filled, so it's not empty. And of course, you can see immediately here, uh, I didn't open a dirty image, but uh, you can see immediately here that the noise is much lower. Actually, let me open the dirty image as well. So we can do a compa direct comparison between all the images. So we can go to the display options here, data display options. In the top part, you see that we have all the uh, image name of the images that have been rastered. So you can also load the, the images as contours. Um, we, you can change the stretch, for example, to minus two. And if you select global color settings, all the images will be put on the same uh, uh, scale. So I think this one is- One minute. Yeah. One minute. Okay. Uh, so here, just let me show you the model image. That is a uh, sum of several uh, delta functions, so delta components. And with the regions here, you can see with statistics the properties of the images. For example, here the RMS is of about 36 microjansky per beam. If we go through the dirty image, it was 0 0.1 millijansky per beam. With this one here, you can also save the image uh, in PNG and uh, um, you can uh, uh, use all the regions to estimate here with the statistics you can uh, you can check uh, last uh, very last thing if you want to export your image your images in uh, um, uh, fits file, the task is export fits. And there is, uh, uh, here you can see that you can give your, the name of your fits images. You have several parameters that you can change and this will change the keywords in your fits header. One particularly important is drop uh, generate axis and drop stocks, which by definition, by default, uh, sorry, uh, for uh, uh, PLBI images is set to four uh, instead of two, which is what typically uh, plotting routine use. And yeah, then I will stop here. Thank you very much. It was a very clean and clear <laughs> lecture. So I think everyone understood everything that you need to do and be careful during cleaning. So I've seen a number of questions, both in the Q&A and Mattermost. So it's uh, probably you can read some of them. Yeah, the first one that came in uh, from Arnaud Curio. Is there a way to automatically set the clean boxes, for example, about around residual peaks? I've never tried it myself. So in general, I go either with boxes uh, setting uh, by hand, let's say in the interactive way as we did, or no boxes at all. Uh, so I, I don't know if there is a way to set the clean boxes. But if you do not use, if you, um, if you do not use clean boxes, but you use a threshold, for example, then you, uh, it's kind of uh, you are uh, setting a limit uh, each single time for uh, deciding where, the, where is the minimum peak flux then peak surface brightness that you want to set. So it's, um, I think it's uh, effective uh, even without adding the boxes. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know if any of you knows this. I, I... So as far as I know, within CASA or within T-Clean, there's, uh, you can either set automatic boxes based upon the signal to noise. Uh, so there's an N sigma parameter, which will allow you to set this. No, auto multi-thresh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Oh. So it's called auto multi-thresh in the use mass parameter. 
um, and then you can set that to be um, some sigma of your source. But again, that's dependent on how well behaved your PSF is. So for VLBI arrays, sometimes it does mess up because it's CASA T clean was built for VLA, which has lovely, beautiful Gaussian PSFs. Meanwhile, VLBI doesn't. So there is some ways of doing it, but also there's also other ways in WS clean and things like but, this. Uh, to sorry, set that, them that's does this create a box or does this uh, just give a threshold for the, like a Sigma threshold? No, it gives a box, yeah. Okay. Um, and then you can use the auto thresholding then to say when to stop cleaning to on top. But it's, uh, it's a bit fiddly, that's the best way to describe it. Okay, I think that's clear. Um, there is a few questions about uh, the masking. Um, so Michal Lisakov is asking, how does T-Clean perform in unsupervised mode with no boxes provided? Okay, that's, uh, that's a good one. Uh, so um, uh, when, you, when you set a threshold, of course, so I just stress this uh, just to not leave uh, like people doing uh, cleaning with number of iterations to so a very large number without any threshold, then uh, um, in, uh, I, I find it that, uh, for, with, for example, with a three sigma threshold or a two sigma threshold, it uh, uh, behaves very well. Like I get an image that is very close to what I uh, obtained with clean boxes. The point of putting the boxes is to um, make the convergence of the cleaning faster. So you, it's okay okay to use it in an unsupervised mode, but it's much lower because it scans the entire image to check for the, the brightest pixel, the brightest peak, because it's a delta function, the one, the algorithm that I used. So basically it checks for a search for a pixel. And uh, uh, so you, if you have a very large uh, image, uh, then it can take a while, but it's okay. Okay. And related to that in the Mattermost, Victor Perez is asking, can you save the coordinates of your masks in order to use them later in non-interactive mode? Sorry, can you say the first part again? I missed it. Can you save the coordinates of the masks, the polygons or the boxes? Ah, yeah. uh, yes, yes, indeed. Actually, the dot mask image, like the first, let's say that you clean the first time so that you have created from the first cleaning your mask that you want to use for self-calibration, then the dot mask will be registered uh, in the same size and pixel scale of uh, the image that you have created. So the issue here, and I don't know if any of the other uh, panelists or people know here, is that if you are creating then an image that has different pixel scale and different image size, then you cannot use the same mask that you have created. But otherwise you have a hard copy on your dot mask saved in the folder in the directory where you are working. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the trick here is that it's not the actual coordinates, but it's uh, the, the image coordinates, uh, the pixel size and number of pixels yeah. where it's located. Okay. I think, can I just add on to that as well? Yeah. It's also, if you wanted to make, say if you had a previous image of your target field, you can also make your own mask by um, doing it in the viewer and then using the CASA task make, make mask, you can then convert that into a clean mask. If you wanted to do something before you'd even clean the field, but you kind of know what it already should look like. So that's that. that's task. It's just it's called make mask. Yeah. Okay, I've uh, added that to the answers. Uh, the next one up is a question from uh, also from Mikhail Lisakov. Is it possible to switch the units in Casa from arc second to micro arc seconds and Janskis from milli Janskis? I actually do not know. I uh, I think uh, the, the default is that, but I do not know if it can handle a different uh, units. Like if you load a um, an image where you change the header, basically, and you change the, of course, values of the pixels uh, from Janskins to Mili Janskins, and you did the proper conversion. I don't know. That can, can you do it? I don't know, never tried. I never tried it, yeah. What I tried is to change uh, everything in, uh, like, like for example, the units uh, in uh, Pi using PyFits, then loading the image back again in Casa Viewer, and it shows the uh, it, it shows the right values, but it doesn't show the units Miljanski. Maybe Benito was saying something. No, I'm also not sure, I've never tried it. Okay, um, let me see then. 
here in the MetaMost as a question from uh, Dalai Li. To get more extended emission, what are the differences between using the T-Clean parameters UV taper and restoring beam? For example, image with beam size, or maybe it's easy if you read along here, with lot uh, of 1.7 by 1.2 square micro if it's in. I just have to read, apologies. Um, let me first read. Not quite sure. Let, so, let me see. Well, so the first, yeah, the first part of the question is actually the, the actual question, and then it follows with an example. Okay. So to get more extended emission, what are the differences between using the T-Clean parameters UV taper and restoring beam? So this is about uh, the, the, the tapering and, and what the impact is on your final image. Yeah, so uh, they, uh, they work in two different uh, ways uh, and they do different things. So the UV taper actually is a, um, let's say, selection of the UV wavelength that you prefer to use, you want to use, so it's not a UV cut. It, will, uh, it doesn't uh, elim uh, eliminate, uh, for example, the longest base lines. Let's, do, for example, in, uh, let's assume that we are tapering towards the shortest base lines because we have uh, an extended emission. So you, um, you will wait more the, uh, the shorter base lines, uh, more than in the way that you would do with natural weights, because you are selecting the scales that you want to, uh, to reach with your uh, uh, tapering. Of course, this will change the size of your restoring final clean beam, because that depends on the base, uh, how you weight the base lines. Um, so the, that is, uh, I think, the best way to, uh, to search and to address the extended emission in sources, uh, while the restoring Restoring beam is something very useful, for example, in the case you have to create a spectral index map where you have to uh, obtain two images at two different frequencies with the same beam. So what uh, it will do is to, um, I'm not uh, very much experienced in doing this uh, in uh, CASA, but uh, uh, in theory, it should uh, restore the main, uh, the clean beam. It will, should create the clean beam with the parameters that you set with the restoring beam. And then uh, I'm not sure that it can handle the the noise of the images in the same way the UV taper does. But the idea is that you are forcing a beam, a certain size of the beam, for example, a circular beam for using that image for other purposes. But for the extended emission, I would work for with multi-scale cleaning and you play a little bit around with the UV tapering rather than using the restoring beam. But I'm not sure if this answers. Um... Yeah, I, I think. Uh, well, we can get back to the discussion on, on MetaMOS if this doesn't quite answer the question. There was actually a question also about multi skill clean, and this has been answered uh, on the MetaMOS. So somebody asked about if there is a way to do extended emission with, with uh, Gaussian components, and, and there is indeed, this is multi skill clean, and this has been around for a decade or so, and I think it is also in, possible in T-Clean, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. There's lots of questions coming in. We've not much time, so I'll just continue down uh, in chronological order. On the Q&A, Stefano Giaratana is asking, which kind of artifacts do we get by oversampling, taking more than five pixels per beam, for example? Okay, so um, you can imagine that basically what we are doing with oversampling is to sample the very same part of the source <laughs> With multiple, with multiple pixels, so we are not extracting new information. So something that I happen to have, maybe other people had different experiences, is that you really create a new component uh, in your, uh, around your um, images. This is especially complicated when you work at a low signal to noise ratio. And so that's, uh, that, that's the kind of effect that I encountered, but um, not sure if there are other experiences on that. Uh, I've got one thing on top is that, especially with the, the VLB IPSFs being extremely non-Gaussian, often oversampling allows you to fit to the, the peak of the, the PSF to kind of get the representative resolution much better than you would do if you had some nice Gaussian uh, PSF, because at least through Nyquist sampling, you need to have three pixels going across to fit to a Gaussian, but when you have horrible side loads and things, you definitely sometimes need to have more uh, to be able to do this. Yeah, that's a good point. Thanks, Jack. 
Can you follow up on that? I'll, I'll type my answer in the Q&A. Can you follow up with that, Jack? Because I didn't quite get it. Sure, no problem. Yeah, I'll okay. put it in. Thanks. Um, let me see that I'm doing this in the right order. OK, uh, uh, there's also a comment now on the auto boxing in CASA in the uh, MetaMost chats. Um, a question from an anonymous person. Is there an interactive way to see if the accumulated clean flux with the number of iterations as the cleaning is running. So can you see the accumulated clean flux while it is running? Uh, well, you can see this in the logger. I'm not sure if you want to see each single component that, that has been added to the model. I don't think that you can see that. I think that you can see at the end of each major cycle, what is the total uh, flux that has been increased, like as I um, showed you uh, before. So maybe you can check again the log uh, in a, like a separate uh, time with posing. Uh, so you can check the total flux density that has been accumulated during the major cycle that you can check. And you should check that it's always increasing. Yeah. OK, I think that should be clear. Do we have time for one last question, Benito? Oh, a minute, so maybe last one. Quick one. Sigi uh, Apeng is asking uh, about your source, which you showed as an example. Is that an AGM galaxy through a gravitational lens? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's an AGN jet. Actually, there are beautifully global VLBI images uh, from um, Andy Bix uh, of this um, of this AGN with multiple knots. And uh, yes, it's uh, lensed by a foreground object that is a galaxy. Uh, the redshift, uh, unfortunately, is not very well known. The background source is a redshift three something. And uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So with that, we end the question section. So we may move to the next uh, lecture done by Javier Moldon. And he's going to talk about self-calibration. So everything that you do after you obtain the first image in your data and how you improve the calibration. And Javi, you are there, you can start. Okay. Yeah, the lecture, I will give you a five minute 